Good morning, everyone, and happy Father's Day. Hope that this will be a, a day in which you have opportunity to gather together as family. Uh, great, grateful for those of you who have been able to gather here with me this morning as family. Uh, we look forward to the time in which we can share together uh, in our celebration of God uh, in our love for one another as well. And we welcome those who are worshiping with us uh, at this very time and all by way of uh, the uh, internet through Facebook or, or YouTube. And uh, we look forward to those who will be joining us uh, later on today when they have opportunity to do so. Uh, I noticed uh, from what has been shared with me mostly uh, that uh, we're getting a, a number of uh, hits, if you will. A number of people are, are tuning in. Uh, I'm not sure where all of these numbers are, are coming from, but grateful for, for the opportunity to be able to extend the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, beyond just the sanctuary uh, and who knows to what other dis to what distances the message may be sent and and those that are, from those that are tuning in but we're grateful to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with all who have an ear for it and a desire for it and, and perhaps from time to time uh, from someone who is just seeking a word uh, they are at a time in their life where they need to hear from God and we may be the ones that God uses to be able to deliver that word to them, and that would be a wonderful thought. Uh, let me share a couple of things with you in the way of announcements this morning. Uh, I want to encourage you to stay in touch with one another, as many of you have already been doing, to continue to do so, to check on those uh, especially uh, that might be otherwise uh, living uh, uh, singly uh, to themselves, make sure they're doing okay, uh, to reach out and to... Uh, be a, a witness and, and to minister to those, not just within our church family, but remember your neighbors uh, as they continue to go through this difficult time as well. Uh, let us take advantage of the opportunities that God gives us uh, to be his servants and to serve others in his name. I uh, want to remind the session that we will have our regular monthly meeting next Sunday following the morning worship service. We'll meet downstairs in the fellowship hall. Uh, so please keep that in mind. Make a note of it uh, for any of the uh, uh, elders that are in the session that are not present with us this morning. Make certain that they get that message, if you will, please. Uh, I'm going to be doing a Bible study in, in the very <coughs> near future. Uh, I'm going to get with Patrick. Uh, he's been my helper at doing these, uh, these Bible studies and going to set it up at a time when it's convenient for him and I'm going to try to put together a couple of lessons each time so that we won't have to get together so often but it's going to be on the book of Jonah uh, I want you to be looking for that it, it won't start this coming Wednesday but I'm going to have it where it'll be out on Wednesdays uh, and it'll be the, for four sessions uh, so be looking for that hopefully by next Sunday I'll, I'll have you something more definite so that you'll be able to know exactly when it's coming your way. Uh, again, I appreciate everyone who is uh, still trying to uh, keep the, their classes going or, or their studies going with, their, uh, with, with one another in, in the Bible uh, by way of FaceTime or, or whatever way that you're choosing to do it or you're able to do so. I, I appreciate your, your effort here in that manner. Uh, several churches, uh, other Cumberland churches, have started meeting again some on a, on a limited basis as we are here at Rocky Ridge. Uh, some are even beginning to, uh, to do other things as well. And we'll be talking about that in the session and as we look down the road as, when it's a, a good idea for us. But we'll continue as we are right now uh, until we feel that it's time to, to take that next step. So be praying for us for the wisdom we need from God to be able to, to know how to to make the kind of decision that will impact the church family for the best. Are there any other announcements that need to come before our church this morning before we get started into our worship? If not, let us open with prayer. Our Father, we want to first of all express our gratitude to you, our Heavenly Father, for your understanding heart, for your mercy and your goodness. And all we hope to be children that please you, uh, in our thoughts, uh, in our words, in our actions. We thank you for being forgiving toward us when we have sinned, and we do ask for that forgiveness, Lord, for we need it so often. 
Help us to be mindful that in our own weakness before you, others are weak as well. And sometimes we're weak in our relationships with one another and we sin against one another. We ask that you help us to be forgiving and help us to also receive that forgiveness with, with the kind of heart that our Lord Jesus would want us to do so. Thank you for bringing us here today for this special time of worship and for others who are joining us as they can. Draw all of our hearts together with you as one. Accept our offering of praise and thanksgiving, Father, as our gift to you today as well as other ways in which we can also issue our, our express our love to you. But we pray that you will draw near to us as we, have, as we seek to draw near to you. And we'll give you the glory and the praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. If you would like to stand and join us as we sing.
you want to go ahead and set your place in the Bible, we're going to have prayer as a congregation of, of, for intercession on behalf of all. But uh, before we do that, uh, let me let you know where we're going to be. Psalm 145. We're going to look at the first four verses in Psalm 145. So if you want to go ahead and set your place there. And uh, if I don't, if, I, if, if the Lord doesn't change my mind, uh, about this. Next Sunday, I'm going to be in the Psalms again, and I'm going to be looking at Psalm 55, uh, where the message awaits us. Uh, you say, what is the message? Uh, I don't know. No, that's the title of the message. I don't know. And, uh, so that's next Sunday. Today, I'm going to talk about passing the baton, passing the baton, and we'll talk more about that in a few moments. There are a number of prayer concerns, first of all, I, I wish to bring to your attention. Obviously, the, the ongoing uh, COVID-19 that we're experiencing, and uh, they say the, the numbers here in our state have, uh, have escalated a bit, so that is certainly a concern of ours, uh, along with uh, other peoples in our, in our country and throughout the world. We want to be mindful of them. One of the things that's been brought to my attention, though, is it's not just for their physical well-being. While that's a, a very important aspect of this, think about it also in terms of spiritual well-being. Uh, a lot of people are being impacted by this, and some of those that are being hit by this are, are not ready to deal with their, the fact of, their, of the possibility of their death. They're not ready to go and meet their maker, and we need to be mindful of this. Uh, this is not something to overlook. While we want people to be physically well, we want them to be spiritually well, too. We want them to have a, a right relationship with God. And, uh, for If we are at the point of, of having to deal with the fact of death uh, in, in a most personal way, if it's coming, we want to be ready for that moment when it comes, when that time we are called out from, the, uh, from this life that we know here on earth. So let us be mindful of those, uh, not only their physical well-being, but think about their spiritual well-being, too, and pray that they're ready to deal with whatever they have to deal with at this time in their life. Be in prayer for your session. Again, we'll be meeting next Sunday following our morning worship service. Be, be in prayer for them. There, I don't know uh, altogether what's going on in all of our church uh, family members, but I, I do know that uh, little McKenna is scheduled for surgery again. Uh, I believe it's next month, July 15th. And we want to be in prayer for her and her family. Uh, this will be at the Children's Hospital here in Birmingham. So remember little McKenna in your prayers this, with me this morning too. And, and remember uh, any of those uh, who are uh, still, uh, maybe they don't have the COVID-19, but because of other physical uh, problems that they have, they, they need to be lifted up. They, they're concerned about their, their overall well-being because of their, their vulnerability. So please uh, pray for them and pray for their peace of mind. And I'll pray that they, their trust in God and uh, will give them that peace that they, they might need at this particular time and ease any of their concerns. Pray for all of our brothers and sisters in Christ. There are still churches uh, that are uh, trying to determine whether or not it's, it's the right time for them to reassemble. Even, even in a simple way, like what we're doing here this morning, pray for, the, for God's guidance there uh, that they might know the right decision for their, for their church family. Uh, and also for uh, those in leadership throughout our, our denomination, uh, be in prayer uh, for them as they uh, are not only uh, here, but they're also looking elsewhere, trying to help others uh, deal with, uh, with the things that are ongoing in their lives, uh, looking for direction and encouragement along the way. So let's be mindful of this as we pray together too. Father, as we come before you this morning, we do again with grateful hearts. I'm so glad to be able to stand here before you and before your people. And I feel humbled by the, the fact of it as well because I, I feel that myself, I, I'm certainly not worthy of, the, of being able to stand here uh, only by your grace. And through the forgiveness uh, that comes through the blood of your son, Jesus Christ, and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, do I take this place here today and, and accept the challenge that has been given me. I pray that you'll help me uh, to get my mind set together and to look to you and allow you to guide me in terms of my thoughts and my words so that the message that is shared today will be that which is delivered from your heart first and foremost. 
And we do look to you on behalf of uh, others today that are listening in and, and, and going to be watching over the way of internet and, and pray that they too will find uh, their, your closeness uh, for their lives, that they will draw near to you in their hearts and will allow you to share with them what you desire to, to bring to their lives today. May they be open as we need to be open and, and hopefully responsive to your, to your call for our lives as a result of that which is shared this, mo this morning. I pray for uh, those that are, are dealing with uh, the ba and battling this sickness right now, for others who are, who are living perhaps in, in fear of this sickness and, and in some ways are, are being bound by that. I pray for each one of them's release for their healing. Uh, I look to you for those that are spiritually, not just physically, but spiritually uh, right now alone in this when they don't have to be because you're there for them and want to be and want them to know that you are and you desire they put their full trust in you, not just for their physical welfare, but for their spiritual welfare. May their hearts be drawn to you, Lord, through the Holy Spirit. I pray for, for the session that will be meeting next Sunday, that you will prepare our hearts even ahead of time for that which needs to be brought to each one's attention, uh, that the decisions that are made will be according to your heart, for your glory, and for the good of this church. Thank you, Father, for being here to be the difference that we all need so much for our lives right now. We're still dealing with a way of life that it is still yet strange for us and, and struggling with that in, in so many different ways. Help us, Father, to, to understand again that while we feel bound, you're not bound. And may we find a new sense of freedom in that fact, knowing again that you are able to set us free in ways that are not necessarily seen or, or understood with the human mind, but they work nonetheless. Just like you set your Apostle Paul free, even when he was in chains and in prison, you gave him a greater freedom and all than any could imagine. May we sense that your presence with us and experience your freedom as he did as well. To you, Father, we give the glory and the praise. Now bring our hearts together with you, our ears, make them attentive, Father, to what you're going to share with us. For your glory, for our good, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm reading out of the Psalms this morning from 145, beginning with verse 1. I will exalt you, my God, the King, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you, and I will extol your name forever and ever and ever. Great is the Lord, and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can even fathom. One generation will commend your works to another, and they will tell of your mighty acts. And it's that fourth verse that really grabbed my heart and my attention that I'm going to lean upon as I lean upon the Lord to share what I feel is his message for us today passing the baton, passing the baton. Years ago when I was pastor here at the Rocky Ridge Church, way back into the 1980s now, uh, I was working out at a gym uh, on Highway 280. And while I was working there, someone came over to my side that I had become friends with, uh, and he wanted to introduce me to a young man. The young man's name was Willie Smith. I don't know if you, the name Willie Smith even means anything to you at this particular time, but Willie Smith was pretty popular at that particular time anyway because he was a part of the 1984 Olympics men's relay racing team. He raced on uh, the team, the 4 by 400 and I've, I've got a, I don't know that you can even see this, but uh, it's a t-shirt that that Willie signed, autographed for me, and gave me, and I've held on to it all, all of these years. Willie Smith, 1984 Olympic gold medalist and the men's 4x400 four relay. That's really something. Uh, but I got caught up in a conversation with Willie about racing, uh, relay racing, if you will, and, and the particulars of it. My, my interest was in you know, uh, Willie, uh, you know, this, this relay racing, uh, what's the, the, the most important thing? And he looked at me and he said, that you don't drop the baton. <laughs> you don't drop the baton. That's important. 
and, and he went on to talk about uh, the importance of the, uh, and, and the, uh, all that went into the, the passing of the baton. And I, I didn't realize, you know, it looks so simple when you're watching it, you know. It, it doesn't look all that complicated, but, it, but it, it can really be. He told me, he said, actually, whether you believe this or not, it takes a whole lot of, of discipline and practice and even communication uh, to get it right. And you don't have a lot of chances to do that in a relay race. So you, you want to be sure you're as close to being, I guess, perfect as you possibly can be at that pivotal moment. And while I've never run in a relay race myself, I can only imagine how exciting it must be and how the adrenaline must be really pumping at that moment when you're handing the baton off to the, the person who's next to, to take it up and, and run on with it. And I can also think how scary it might be, you know, what happens if I stumble at that moment? Or what happens if I make a miscalculation or, or the person I'm handing it to uh, makes a, a, a miscalculation and, and, and we drop the baton in the doing so? All that hard work, all, all that training and what have you would, would suddenly be no, no good. It would be a loss. I kind of believe in my mind that there's something to this also in what the psalmist says when he says one generation will commend your works to another and they will tell of your mighty acts. I kind of see this as the passing of the baton, if you will, uh, of the handing off that which is able to give their, their level best. They might not all be on the same level in terms of their, of their ultimate abilities. But they use their, their ultimate abilities, each one of them, to be able to be sure that it succeeds for the whole. And that's what we have to do as well. So how do we commend? How do we commend this, this gospel? How do we commend the word of God to those that we, we love so dearly that we desire to have a love for him and, a, and, and, and follow after him? Well, I believe we find yet another place in the scriptures that will help us to understand what the psalmist is talking about here. And for that, I ask you to go with me to Deuteronomy. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, Moses is speaking at this particular point to the people of God. They have been in the wilderness for some time now. They, have le they left Egypt long ago, but they've been in the wilderness for a while. They have not yet arrived where they are, are supposed to be, but they're getting close. And he gives them some instruction here that I want you to listen to. You know these words perhaps already very well, but hear them again. Deuteronomy chapter 6, beginning with verse 4, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commands... These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts and also impress them, impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit down at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them down on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. When the Lord your God brings you into the land that he swore to your fathers, that is to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you a land with large flourishing cities that you did not build and houses filled with all kinds of good things that you did not provide, wells that you did not dig and vineyards and olive groves you did not plant, then you will eat and become satisfied. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. I have to remind myself as a parent to not forget. To not forget because in remembering what God has done for me, it helps me also to, to remember what he needs to do and he desires to do for those that I love in my family. But I need to take hold of it because even as the writer said here in Deuteronomy, first of all, first of all, you need to embrace this with your heart, then impress it upon your children. Sometimes I wonder if parents are trying to impress upon their children what they have yet to embrace within their own hearts. 
It's important that we, that we have our own personal relationship with our God before we hope to establish in the minds and ultimately through the Holy Spirit in the hearts of our children a relationship with God as well. So I want to share three things with you in light of this second passage that I think falls in line with the first that I shared with you, that, that verse from Psalm 145, and it's this. Number one, if we're going to pass the baton or hope to pass it rightly, we have to build a relationship. That's the first thing I want to impress upon you, and if you're taking notes, please write that down. Build a relationship. What do I mean? First of all, build a relationship with your Father in heaven. Build a relationship with Him. You know, because that's essential to this. You know, that's what the, the writer of Deuteronomy was impressing upon us, you know, that we have to have our own personal relationship. We are to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Nothing is left, if you will, unspoken. Nothing is, is left out of the equation, but we're to love him with everything that we have. That is, my friend, what leads us to the point where we can commend then later to our, our children what they need to take hold of because it's already got a hold of us. So we need to build a relationship with our Father in heaven because you cannot pass on what you do not already have. It's important that I know my own heart and my relationship with God before I try to help my, my family know what their heart is in relationship with him. Love him, my friend. Love his word. Love his worth. And love his will for your life. Embrace that and live in it. Love his words. Spend time in God's word. Because understanding his worth and his will are there. And so we need to do that. Spend time with him in prayer. Build a relationship with your heavenly father. And secondly, as you do, you're able to do more so. You're able to build uh, the kind of relationship you need to build with your family as well. Not just with your heavenly father, but with your, with your family. And, all that you, and, and notice something else that he said here that got my attention. He said, impress these things on your children. And then listen to what he says. Talk about them, what? When you sit down, when you walk, when you lie down, when you get up. Among other things, what that tells me is it takes time, doesn't it? We've got to spend time together with one another to be able to do these things, to be able to impress these things and hope that they, they find a place within the hearts of those we love. It, it takes time when you sit down, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, when you get up. That's a, that means we've got to find a way to spend more time maybe than what we already are with the people that we love, to be able to convey this, to be able to pass the baton. Building a relationship is, is not a, a, a thing we do in the moment, is it? It's not something that we do in one setting. It's something that happens over time. And in some ways, I believe as a parent that it hasn't ceased <laughs> even now. I think I'm still working on this, and I find I've got a new arena as a grandparent a whole new arena to be working as well. And I think even as a child, I'm still learning, if you will. I'm still learning from the things that were passed along to me. And, I'm, and I treasure that. And you know, those are precious memories that I, I hold to heart. So build a, a relationship. That's, that's part of the process in terms of, of discipline and, and practice and communication. Building a relationship. The second thing it is, that we, I want to impress upon you is bombard them with the scriptures. Bombard them with the words of God. Never get tired of telling them. Even though you've told them once before, tell them again. Even though they know it well, tell them anyway. Again, the story so that they need to hear from God's words. Bombard them with the truth. The idea of commending is, again, we're doing this with enthusiastically. We're, we're doing it because... We're excited about what God has revealed to us, and we want him to reveal it to them too. We want them to have what we have, have as well, what we have give, been given from the Lord. We want them to experience for themselves. 
In Deuteronomy 6, 7, it says, impress these things upon your children. And so I, I, I've had people tell me from time to time, preacher, I don't know about this idea of bombarding my children with the truth. I, I don't want to you know, push God upon them. You know, I don't, I don't want to, 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 to I, I may run them away from the church or run them away from God rather than to God. Let me tell you, you live in a world that's not afraid to bombard your children with all kinds of stuff. You live in a world that does not, is not afraid to try to impress upon them certain ideas and certain beliefs that are contrary to what is in this book right here. And if you hold back, believe me, the world is not going to be holding back. you just giving them more advantage and all by letting them have more freedom to do what you are unwilling to do yourself. I would rather run them away with the truth than hold the truth from them and let them be caught up in a lie, possibly. I would rather take my, my chances this way. Every, there's a, you, you say, well, well, it sounds like you've got an agenda. I do. And, and, and I believe as, as godly parents, we, we do have an agenda, or we should. The world has an agenda. We better have an agenda. We better know what we're about. We better know who we are. And we better know what God has in his heart and what he desires for them and help them to find it. There's going to come a point where they are going to stop listening to you and all. There's going to come that point when they are going to maybe not listen to what you have to say anymore. You better take advantage of the moments that you have where you have the most opportunity and influence. Bombard them with the truth. That's part of the process, I believe. I believe we, 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 don't, we, never, we never should come to the point where we feel like we have educated enough or we have been educated enough. We should always be in a state of learning and a state of also teaching as well, passing along to others. And there's one last thing that I want to impress upon you today that, that grabbed a hold of my heart. It's not just to build relationships, which is an important part of the process, and bombarding with the truth, because the more we hear it, hopefully the more of it we will hold on to, and the more of it that will hold on to us. But the third and last thing is be an example. Be an example before them. When I look at these verses again in Deuteronomy in chapter 6, it says, Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. The idea here is, and all, whether it's near the mind or it's on the hands, our actions, our attitude, our actions, uh, and, and the door frames and the doorposts of our house. Be careful what you let in and, all, and be sure of what you take with you when you go out. All of this is a part of the process, isn't it? We are to be an example. And all. We're, we're not just to, to give them something that we, again, haven't taken hold of, but we are to teach them a truth, a truth that is already a foundation within our own hearts. Be an example of this truth. Not only in your words, but in your walk. Let them see it. You tell them this is the way people ought to live, then live that way before them. You tell them this is right and this is wrong, then show them by your own example. By doing what is right and by not doing the things that you know to be wrong. If you believe that it takes a, a complete commitment of one's heart, then let your heart be completely Commit it to the Lord in every way so that they can see this. Paul understood what, what this was all about. And when he was writing to Timothy in his last letter in 2 Timothy, he wrote these words. He said, Timothy, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus, they're going to find it very challenging. He speaks of persecution and it comes with that and with problems. He said there are going to be evil people, imposters, imposters out there, and things are going to go from bad to worse. There's going to be a lot of deception, and there's going to be people being deceived. But as for you, but as for you, continue in what you have learned and you have become convinced of because you know those whom you have learned it, from whom you have learned it. And you, and you know how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures 
you realize that they are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Because all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching and rebuking, for correcting and training in righteousness so that the person of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Paul is saying here, you know, he's commending to Timothy and all that which he hopes that Timothy will, will take to heart. Timothy, there's going to be a lot of things that are not going to be what they should be in the world in which you're going to find yourself. Don't become a part of the problem, though. Become a part of the answer. How do you do that? By taking hold of that which has already been given you. Don't drop the baton. Take hold of it and go deeper into it. And I'll become disciplined. Practice the words of God. Live them out. Learn to communicate and share with others what is being shared with you. And this way you will pass the baton. And hopefully the one whom whom you pass it to will be able and ready to take hold of it and continue to the race that is set before them as well. I mentioned Josh McDowell, and I'm going to close with this. I mentioned him er earlier in my message. Now, I, I don't know that I altogether agree with everything that Josh McDowell has written, but it does make you think. The church, he said, has always been one generation away from extinction. Church has always been one generation away from extinction. If a whole generation were lost, he said, we would lose the church. But even a single individual lost to the gospel of Jesus Christ closes the doors for a lot of other people. Just as one person who is born again into the kingdom can become the seed by which many will enter into the kingdom, one who is lost to the kingdom can also result in the doors being closed for many generations of descendants unless the Lord reaches out to bring some of them back. I don't want God to have to look past me or to look beyond me because what I, I refuse to pass the baton or because I dropped it through my rebellion and and through my rejection of what his heart was for me to do with it. I, I don't want to become that and I know that you don't either. Ask God for the strength. Ask him for the wisdom. Ask him for the opportunity to pass the baton and not only within our families but within our other relationships as well to hand off that which others can take hold of and run with themselves so that it might be handed off to someone else too. It's a wonderful picture there that God gives us and it requires us now to give ourselves first and fully to him so that we can give ourselves in this way to one another. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for these words today. I thank you for the challenge that they have brought to my heart, and I pray that they have spoken to the hearts of those who have heard them and that they will be received as you want them to be received, not only in the sense of what we are learning through them, but what they are going to inspire and how they're going to transform us in terms of living in accordance with them. To your glory, through Jesus Christ, for it's in his name I pray. Amen. Before we, we're going to close in a few moments. Before we do, I want to share with you a passage of scripture that I hope will encourage you, inspire you in your giving of whatever offering you have brought today. I want to remind you that as you leave here, after we close with prayer, there will be places, there will be plates out here where you are able to place your offering uh, as you are dismissed. At this time, I would ask that you stand with me for the reading of this scripture for our closing prayer and our prayer of dedication. When Paul was writing to the church at Corinth, he instructed them with these words, each person should give what they have decided in their hearts to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver.
Let us pray. Father, we pray that you will accept the offerings that we bring to you today, that you will bless these gifts, you will inspire those that are instructed to use them according to your purpose for your glory. We thank you, Father, that, uh, for blessing us to the point we are able to give, allowing us then the opportunity to express that in this manner. Dismiss us now as we leave here and help us to walk in your spirit throughout this day. Help us to live a life again that, that is in honor of you, a help to others, one that will bring peace to our own hearts because of the oneness that we share in this walk. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. You're dismissed.